The time, eight minutes past nine. Let's go back to one of our main stories this morning and the news that the government has announced overnight that it's suspending the controversial process of fracking in England, saying it's no longer convinced of its safety. A report by the Oil and Gas Authority found it was impossible to predict the impacts of earthquakes caused by the practice. Well, the news will delight anti-fracking campaigners, many of whom have been protesting at a site in Lancashire for the last two years. And we're joined now by one of them, Barbara Richardson. Welcome to the programme. Thanks for coming in. Uh, so you heard overnight, did you? Uh, yes, um, we did indeed. Um, it's quite unexpected. Um, we have, uh, we welcome it. Obviously, it's a good move. However, we're fairly sceptical, a bit cynical about the timing of the announcement prior to a general election and with Parliament dissolving next week. So you're concerned that once this election is over, because we know the Prime Minister in the past has voiced his support of fracking, you think he might get this election out of the way and then resurrect the plan? It's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when you read you know, the report and, and read between the lines, that is possible. And I think because opposition has been growing uh, against fracking across the country and communities which are faced with it, I think he realises with Extinction Rebellion mm -hmm. and you know, the youth climate strikes, that we need a greener future, people want green votes and I think he's deliberately looking to get that vote. Just explain to us, Barbara, because on the face of it, Quadrilla will say hundreds of thousands of pounds of compensation for residents, tens of thousands of new jobs, tens of millions of pounds of investment in parts of the country that need it. What's the problem with fracking? Well, the problem is it's a fossil fuel, it's extreme extraction of fossil fuels and now is not the time to be investing in a whole new fossil fuel industry. You know, this is extreme energy extraction and there are far too many risks, not only to public health but to the environment and we're supposed to be, as you've just said earlier, you know, going to carbon neutral, carbon zero. You know, next year we're hosting COP21, the climate summit. We should be leading on energy policy. We should be looking for a green, renewable, sustainable future. And it's not the time to be investing money in that sort of industry, in a fossil fuel industry. The 2050 target, as part of that, the government says fossil fuels will inevitably be a small part of it just to get us towards that target. Mm -hmm. What will it be replaced by? Renewables. I mean, obviously, we, there's a transition period which we have to go through and we have to move towards renewable energy. Um, but if we, in, you know, if we invest in fossil fuels, then we're not going to move to, to that. We know from the government's own security of supply strategic assessment that there is adequate gas reserves in this country that will see us through to that transition to renewables. So, you know, we don't want to be investing in so, something like uh, fracking. We might end up importing more uh, fuel from abroad even f fracked gas could could end up coming in here now in greater amounts because of this moratorium that's the irony but we're already doing that so why would you set up a whole new industry all you're going to be doing is adding to the overall emissions the carbon emissions you know why not we've got security of supply let's leave it at that and let's move away from fossil fuels let's move towards renewables energy efficiency you know let's put our money let's be leaders let's not take backward steps let's be leaders so you think it's kicking the problem further down the road there's a very human side to this as well i've spoken with people in lancashire where the tremors might be small in terms of the scale but not if it's happening in your home no it, there are a lot of residents very concerned residents who are worried you know we had three thousand reports when there was the 2.9 um, on the Richter scale. People are worried, people are anxious. You know, they want this to go away. They want some respite from this. We've been fighting it for five and a half years. I live not far from there. You know, I'm worried about the potential risks, not just of the earthquakes, but of all the other risks that fracking entails, you know, to the environment and our health. Yeah. When I heard you were coming in this morning and heard about what had happened overnight, this announcement, I thought you would be punching the air. I thought you'd be saying, we've won <laughs> after all those years of protest. But you're actually more kind of sceptical, much more downbeat than I yeah. thought. Um, don't get me wrong, this is a major, major step. The industry have lost a big cheerleader. You know, the government have turned their backs on them effectively and left them. Uh, and it is a day for celebration. You know, we're so pleased with this news. It's a positive step. However, we have to be cautiously optimistic. There is that caveat in the government. We heard it from Andrea Leadsom earlier. It's until it can be proved safe. Mm. So she's not written it off forever. Yeah. Neither has the Prime Minister. No. But I don't think it can ever be safe. It's, it can't be extracted safely 
or economically. You know, you're talking about an industry at scale where there will be hundreds of sites, thousands of wells. How on earth could that be done safely when from one well at Preston New Road we've had over 100 earthquakes? Okay. Well, the UK onshore oil and gas industry, the body that represents the companies, uh, say that uh, they look forward to demonstrating in the future that they believe they can operate safely and environmentally responsibly. Barbara, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for coming in. Thank, thank you. you.